The city of Waukegan is replacing about 20,000 water meters with a new automated meter, which provides for an accurate, timely, and reliable reading without having to gain access to customers' properties. The new meters, which will be replaced at no cost to the customers, will be able to identify high water usage and potential leaks. In addition, customers will be able to access their water usage and account information conveniently online. The first thing you need to do is schedule an appointment with Professional Meters Inc. to have your old meter replaced with a new automated meter reader, AMR for short. Look for a postcard in the mail with the call information or call 866-270-9629. PMI will arrive at your scheduled time to install your meter. They will arrive on a truck or a van with a PMI logo the PMI installer will have on a shirt or a jacket with a PMI logo and will carry a PMI ID badge. Installers will also wear booties over their work boots to ensure they do not carry dirt, mud, or water into your home or business. The installation process should take less than 30 minutes. The installer will take a photo of the old meter to obtain a record of your final meter reading and the condition of the pipes and fittings. The next step is to turn off your shutoff valves located on your water meter line near the meter. Remove the old meter and install the new AMR meter. The transmitter, which transmits your water usage data to the city, will be placed on a convenient location near the meter. The installer will take a photo of the new meter once it's installed. And that's it. The PMI installer will make sure everything is cleaned up, collect his tools, and head on to the next installation. You may receive a follow-up visit from a PMI manager to ensure your satisfaction with the installation and to make a quality control check of the meter installation. For more information about the automated meter reading installation program, please visit www.waukeganil.gov. If you have any questions regarding the meter installation, Contact PMI at 866-270-9629 or the City of Waukegan City Collector at 847-599-2997. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Joaquin City Council meeting of July 5th, 2016. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Cunningham. Alderman Say. Cunningham. Present. Alderman Seeger. Present. Alderman Moisio. Here. Alderman Villalobos. Present. Alderman Newsom. Present. Alderman Tempest. Present. Alderman May. Present. Alderman Valco. Here. Alderman Taylor. Present. Uh, please rise for the invocation and pledge. Bishop Colburn, please. Father, we thank you again for another City Council meeting. We thank you uh, that you brought us so far. Thank you for all those that fought for us for our freedom. We don't forget that day. We thank you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, uh, those of you here, please, please spread the word. Scoop, the, Scoop is this Friday and Saturday. It begins at 6 o'clock, goes till 10 o'clock. Along with Scoop this year, we're going to have a, a carnival behind the horse feathers, um, a children's carnival. Uh, we're also going to have a gospel fest on the lakefront. We're supporting and endorsing. Uh, that's going to be Saturday. Uh, Friday night, the main, the headliner is going to be uh, Rafael Melendez and the Fabulous House Rockers. Uh, phenomenal band. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, Saturday, we're going to start the scoop at 11 a.m. with the car shows, and the car shows will go until about 5 o'clock. Um, we're going to, again, categorize the cars by years from the 50s up till the current date. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of different vehicles there. Uh, the headliner that night will be the Wall of Denial. They're gonna play from eight to 10. Uh, we hope that you'll come down and take part of it. It's a, a citywide festival. 
incorporates every ethnic group in our community, and we are really looking forward to it. So please uh, plan to attend and uh, show your support for that endeavor. Um, those of you who may not know, we have been working with the Department of Justice for the past seven months on reforming um, the police department. We have finally reached an agreement with the Department of Justice. Uh, the people involved in this, in this declaration are um, myself, the NAACP, the Latino Advisory Committee, the Waukegan Police Department, the Latino Coalition, and the, state, the state's attorney's office, and the Citizen for Progress. Um, I talked to the Department of Justice today and asked them if we could divulge some of the things that we've touched on and we intend to implement within the next month. Um, it's a long reaching list of things we, we plan to change. And the spokesperson for this um, is gonna be Mr. Rick Harris, a member of the Citizens for Progress. Mr. Harris, step to the board, uh, Mike, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, council members. Again, my name is Rick Harris. I am a member of the Citizens for Progress uh, Committee. In December of 2015, we shared with you four recommendations that we had made uh, to the mayor. I'm going to briefly go over those in the status and then work my way to the fourth one, which is the DOJ initiative that the mayor just spoke to. The first thing that we recommended was to provide diversity training for our 150 police officers. That training would uh, encompass micro inequities unconscious bias, cognitive bias, cultural awareness, as well as communication styles. Just by way of update, we've conducted a half-day, four-hour training uh, for all 150 officers, and that's going to be followed by eight hours of procedural justice training that the uh, Walking in Police Department are working on right now from a train-to-trainer perspective. That should begin taking place in the next 60 days. Uh, the second item was to review the Civil Service Commission hiring process for disparities and to increase the hiring of people of color for both the police department as well as the fire department and do that through creative recruiting and sourcing of diverse talent. Uh, by way of status update, in conjunction with the Civil Service Commission, we conducted a what we would call a step analysis of their entire process, recruiting, testing, point allocation, uh, slate recommendation, police interview, up through selection. While we did not find any elements or uh, evidence of discrimination in, in, in either of those processes, and that is, that is the reason for the step analysis, we did discover that blacks and Latinos ply, apply for these jobs at a rate of about 5 to 20 percent, uh, significantly lower than their white counterparts. So we are working with the respective chiefs to diversify the recruiting efforts. Additionally, in order to prevent racial disparities, applicants will no longer receive what we would call bonus points for having a college degree. I think any of you that's aware uh, of the civil service process, if you have previous police, fire experience, military experience, um, you speak Spanish or bilingual, uh, you have a college degree, there's a certain number of points you get to your aggregate score. And college degree was, I think it was worth five points. But if you look at studies, you find that Caucasians receive college degrees at a rate significantly higher than Latinos and African Americans. Put a stick pin in that. The significant thing is, is that a, a college education is not, it's not a bona fide job requirement for an entry level police officer or a firefighter. So uh, again, not a discriminatory process, but it had a disparate impact on African Americans and Latinos. So the civil service has agreed to strike that going forward. So there will be no points given for that because, again, it's not a bona fide job requirement and that should level the playing field somewhat too. Also as it relates to this community, which is 80 percent people of color, uh, there is no residency requirement uh, to work for the police department or the fire department. We cannot, we cannot usurp the bargaining agreement. However, the civil service did say what they would be willing to do is to give one point to those individuals, those applicants who uh, are Waukegan High School graduates. That is, again, to encourage, to encourage uh, citizens within this city uh, to start applying for those jobs. I want to be crystal clear when I say this. Uh, anytime you start talking about 
job requirements or bona fide job requirements or changing or altering those things, uh, sometimes your, your language can be misconstrued where people start thinking that you're going to lower job qualifications or job standards, right, for applicants. We're not talking about we're not talking about doing that. The core, basic job requirements, the things that it would take at the very essence and core of a job to be a fireman or a police officer, we are not recommending changing any of those things. When you and I pick up the phone, we call the fire department, we call a police officer, we don't care what color they are, what gender they are, all we want them to do is to be competent, okay? But at the same time, we want, we want you to understand that we clearly understand that being a African American or being a Latino and being qualified are not mutually exclusive. Okay? Sometimes when we start talking about qualifications and, and getting more diversity, I think sometimes, it, 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 so often we start thinking that we're going to do that at the, at the expense of quality, but not, we're not. The third thing was to diversify the use of force commission. The mayor has added, it was five, five Caucasian males, not as though they could not mete out justice and fairness. They've been doing it for some time now. But he did um, add two lower level officers of color to that commission, African American and a Latino. The fourth recommendation, which the mayor spoke to, is that was to partner with the Department of Justice regarding community policing ideas and sharing of best practices to change or improve, improve the image of the Waukegan Police Department as we make a paradigm shift from law enforcement to community policing. Let me, let me start off by saying there was no invest, there's no investigation. Uh, unlike many mayors, unlike many administrations, uh, the mayor invited the Department of Justice here to pressure test to pressure test our processes to share best practices, so there was no in, there was no investigation. But they, after seven long months, we, along with the mayor, chief of police, NAACP, Latino coalition, and state's attorney's office, have been meeting with the DOJ to uh, review all policies and procedures and to make recommendations where appropriate. Uh, some of our key elements of agreement or points of agreement are expanding na the neighborhood policing program, revitalizing the Citizens Police Academy, conduct uh, procedural justice and legitimacy training for all of our officers, uh, revise the citizens' complaint process, develop a body-worn camera uh, policy. As you know, the body-worn cameras are new uh, to this community, so to develop a policy around that and to partner with the state's attorney's office for key training resources. Now, we, what can you expect? We will complete this mediated agreement this month. It will be ratified and signed by all parties next month and available to uh, the entire public uh, in August. While many items are in process, we will need the participation of all of our citizens to execute against the things that we've identified in conjunction with uh, the Department of Justice. If we are to make this city, uh, keep this city, I would say, uh, in, in, a, in a path going forward by way of improvement. Again, throughout there, the seven months, the DOJ found no infractions in any aspect of our policing process. As a matter of fact, most of the improvements that you'll see, the recommendation that you'll see, came from us. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want everyone to understand that we, this was a seven meetings of intense, seven months of intense meetings with the Department of Justice, the NAACP, Latino Coalition, State's Attorney, uh, Citizen for Progress, and uh, it was very, it was a give and take proposition. Hmm. Um, I realized that we had to expand some of our police units, um, which we will do. Um, when this final report comes out, I will sign it, and it will become effective for the next five years in the city of Waukegan. It will be the rules, it will be the rule that we follow for our hiring practices, for our, uh, for our discipline practices, for the use of force, and for the uh, body-worn cameras. So I think once it comes out, everyone's going to be very impressed with the dedication and commitment of the different organizations that participated in this group. Every group that participated had a voice. Every group that participated had a vision for Waukegan, where it needs to be, where it's going to go. And we realized that as much as many things we had different, 
we had in common. So I think it was a very productive seven months. It was very trying. Rick, you know we stayed from, from 5 o'clock till 9, 10 o'clock at night, and it got pretty heated at, at specific times. But uh, at the end of the day, the Department of Justice was very complimentary to the group in itself and to the city of Waukegan for our commitment to making this work. So hopefully our next police and fire test, we will acquire a number of quality applicants of color. And I'm looking forward to the time when we can say that we've done all we can do to make this community a better place to live, work, and play. So thank you. Yes. Yeah. I, I think the council should get a copy of. I agree. Of what? We, I appreciate. We, we can't do that until it's 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 okay. the Department of Justice agreement. Okay. So that was a, a commitment to the Department of Justice when we began this process. We committed to getting this done um, in privacy, and and when it's done, we'll give it share it with the. Well, we'll the only thing, I'm, the only thing is, as, as I. I know Mr. Harrison, I was Mr. Kyle, and many of these people, and I appreciate everything they've done, but we are the council. I mean, the decisions do, when, when lawsuits and things come down the pike, uh, none of those yeah. people are, are making the decision. We are. So I think we should at least be able to see it and, and be able to say, you know, give. And Pr I'm prior sure, to. I'm, 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 sure it's, I'm sure it's, you're, you're, it's done Alderman, well, but I mean. Alderman, I, Alderman, you'll get a copy of it be, before it's, before it's signed. Okay. You'll That's get a copy of it. But I can tell you this. Every every group had a voice and a vote. Yeah. Every group. And I and I don't I'm not I'm not debating it. I, I I'm wholeheartedly all that. I'm not debating it. I just think the council should be able to see it so we can answer questions well, people that weren't involved in it. When it's completed, it's not complete yet. Okay. That's we're not we're asking. not finished with it. You know you, we do get questions and I'd like to I be understand. able to answer questions okay. if I do get them. That's all I, and I'm not okay. you know I, it just we get questions, and we'll probably get questions now about this, and I just want to be able to say, Okay, fine. I want to be able to answer, that's yeah. all. Your Honor, Mr. I'm, Harris. I'm going to take this a little step further. Prior to, once you get through all the JOD and all that, that stuff, before this goes public, I'm expecting for the aldermen, along with all of those groups, to brief us. I'm with Alderman Morzio. They're not going to go to the committees and ask those questions. They're going to come to each and every alderman and expect for us to have uh, the way Ricky just, I'm sorry, Mr. Harris, I, I said Ricky, uh, uh, you know, that's just how we communicate with each other. But Mr. Ha uh, uh, Mr. Harris, the way he just ran that, they're going to expect for aldermen to be the same way. So I'm looking for, before we go public as we did today, that the aldermen get briefed on this in detail so we all can have the same and the same message and then do exactly what that committee and okay. what you guys are doing. We should not be having Alderman, this conversation Alderman, privately. I, I understand and I'll, I'll be happy to give you a copy of that when it's when it's completed. Your Honor, maybe not I'm, maybe I'm not clear. Before this goes public with your final and you give your signature. I think the alderman, not I think, I know the alderman needs to be briefed on this first. Not to come here and say this is public and that's where it is. No. Okay. Because I'm with Greg. Alderman, we'll have a, we're, we're we'll, good? We'll have a committee of the whole. We'll have a committee. We'll bring them. It doesn't need to be private, we'll, Steve. We'll bring them all here. No, does it need to be private, Steve? Yeah, well, yeah. It has to be. Okay. Oh, that's it has fine. To be, it has that's to be. Fine. A, yes. That's fine. That's fine. And you know what, alderman, that's not mine. That was not my request. That was the Department of Justice request. Oh, well, the Department uh, of Justice Rick, have a conference. Rick, do you want to like speak to that? The the Department of Justice during this meeting? Uh, uh, Alderman, Alderman Cunningham, it, it, it is not, that is not under our jurisdiction as it relates to the confidentiality uh, request before we could even embark upon this process, before we can even get started. That was the first order of business by the Department of Justice and their attorneys saying that all of this, the entire process, except for the parties involved, it is to be kept confidential until such time that an agreement is reached and it's signed. I was involved with the same thing in North Chicago and Mayor Rockingham. Same deal. It, the council were not, you didn't issue out uh, unsigned agreements and so forth, nor was the council advised or checked over the agreement before it got signed. And that's something. If you if you're not a, if you're not willing to agree with that, then they will not mediate with you. And now help me out. Mr. That, it's, Depart it's a Department of Justice. It's not under his jurisdiction, and it's not under ours. I, and I agree with you. Okay. But I, I thought I heard you say earlier that 
this is not an investigation. It is not. So if it's not an investigation, then why such secrecy? It's just open and, from my understanding, now I want to make sure I get this right. So are we, are we under investigation? Absolutely no. not. So we're not Absolutely under investigation? Not. No. So what, what arm of the Department of Justice are we communicating with? Is it the Community Relations Service. Uh, okay. Alderman Cunningham, I, I think you're, I, while I appreciate the, the, the jockeying back and forth, I think the call that you probably should make, the question that you should ask should be to the Department of Justice and not, and not, and not to the mayor or to us. I mean, I, you know I, I'm a powerful man, but I don't change federal law. No, I make those, and that's what that's what it is. What you don't want, what you don't want to happen, in all seriousness, is this: you do not want to be around the table, right? And then people are sharing confidential information. People are giving and taking in confidential information, and then it leaps out. It leaks out, and then you you lose the trust. You lose the trust of the very citizens that you're looking to work with and the very entities that you're looking to work with. If I can speak on behalf of the DOJ, I think that's, I think that's the reason and, for and it. And I agree with you. I, 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 don't, I don't disagree with that method. Matter of fact, I appreciate that method. How about this? Once it is agreed upon, everybody say amen, yes, it's fine. Before you go public, why can't you then brief us on what has already been agreed upon and somewhat signed by the mayor before we, it goes public. We will so that do that, all right. let, let me finish. That's not what he just said now. Uh, Sam, you put, you put, you put in word, you're putting words I'm in, in my mouth. I'm, saying, mouth, and, 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 I'm and, not and, trying to put words in your mouth, Mr. I'm not trying to put words. I'm just giving you, uh, again, uh, allow me to say this. Once you have completed your, your process with the Department of Justice, yes. and it's complete, the mayor says yes, you says yes, and all the other committee says yes, before it goes public, will you be able to brief us, so that way we can go back and forth with the various questions that we have, and yes. then go, is that fair? That's yeah. fair enough, absolutely. That's, that's all I'm asking for. That was, that was the first one I... Now, while, while, we're, while, while we're here, I mean, you, 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 got, you, you gentlemen said that, you know, citizens are going to be asking you about, about these things, and I believe that, because a lot of citizens have been asking us you know, what's going on with the DOJ process, this, that, and the other. And uh, the other big question, if it, if it comes up, is, is a lot of people are saying, why isn't the sheriff are at the table? Because I, you think about there's a 150 uh, Waukegan police officers. I think the sheriff's department is the largest law enforcement agency in Lake County. And they're asking, why isn't the sheriff uh, in, involved, especially when there's been at least four deaths uh, within the jail system well, over the past five years. We want to go on record of saying that we invited, we, we invited, it. the mayor it. personally invited the sheriff I went, to... I went to the sheriff's department personally. Oh, stop, stop. This is not the sheriff. I know, this is the city. Yeah, we got no, nothing to do with them. Yeah, we got nothing to do no, with no, that. No, but, but you're going to, uh, Sam, trust me, you're going to, you're going to hear, trust me. you're going to hear, you're going to hear that question asked too. Okay. Even some of our activists are asked, why isn't the sheriff department involved? I got a call from one of the most influential pastors in this area. Reverend, why isn't the sheriff's office involved in, in, in this mediation? But the point is, even the DOJ went over to the sheriff's office and asked for him to participate, and he declined, said that his shop was in order. So in case you hear that, that's why it's an inclusive process. The state's attorney's office is involved. But if the question is asked, that's why the well, sheriff's office is involved. Your Honor, involved. since that was brought up, I, I need to make it very, 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 very clear that I am a part-time worker in the sheriff's department. And I don't want to say I don't speak for the sheriff, nor for the jail, or for that department, because I know where we're going here. So mm -hmm. I don't work for them. I suggest that you call or go over and talk to the sheriff and get that question. I can't answer that for you. And I don't, I don't, we don't suggest, I didn't I, ask, stop, Rick, 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 I'm not him, I didn't ask you a question. I, I never asked you I'm not suggesting that you are, Rick. Okay. I'm just telling you. Rick, Rick thank I'm just you, telling so you thank where you thank, going thank with you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Your Honor, what, yes. Yes. Yeah, I, don't, um, yeah. I, I don't know, Mr. Harris, can you, answer, can you answer this question for me? One of my concerns in this is you're talking about a college education, and I know we took the points away, but now how is that going to play out in real life as far as do, does that mean as promotions happen, does a college degree help you get that promotion? This and was just for the hiring. Just hiring. For promotions, Just for hiring. Okay. For promotions, it does. 
Yes. Okay. Now, will that irony. discriminate against other Jeez. people? Then I, I, I okay. <clears throat> I just want to make sure that we're balancing this along the way. Excellent, excellent question. No, it's just to level the playing field from an entry perspective. Equal access, equal opportunity. Now, did they start at a lower salary than somebody coming no. in? Mm -mm. Okay. Nope. Excellent no. question, though. Okay. Just, you know, just a from the promotional perspective, it will, it'll be transparent. You're, okay, Rick, thank you so much. Thank you. One thank more, you so one much. more. Yes. And I don't want to belabor this anymore, it's been belabored, but it's just puzzling to me. And again, I, I appreciate all the work that Reverend Harris and everybody else has done. I really do. But the DOJ circumvented the elected representatives of the I, people? I guess so. We're the elected representatives of the people. We, we go through the election process. We get elected up here, and the DOJ says, no, no, no. This is, this yeah. is. Hold the, on, Mayor. You say, no, no, no. We can't have the elected representatives of the people involved in this? I'd like to talk to the Department of Justice, and I think this is a good thing. I think it's the best thing we've had done, but I still would like to talk to the Department of Justice and ask them, you circumvented the elected representatives of the people. You're not going to do that to Congress. I guarantee you're not going to. When the, when the time comes, Alderman, I will. We'll, have, we'll have Mr. Bourgeron here from the Department of Justice, and we'll have the NAACP, the Latino Coalition. We'll have all those groups here. You can. You can vent those those issues with them. It's not about but, them. It's about the Department of Justice. I, well, this this whole thing. When I called the Department of Justice to get this resolved, um, because they had uh, it had implied that we had done something inappropriate, right. and I told them I I'd be prepared to discuss these issues with them, with the understanding that we had done, we had violated no order or any any programs through the Department of Justice. So they came in. They set the parameters. They set. They, they invited the people to the table. The Department of Justice invited the different groups to the table. Okay. So that's how that happened. Um, when they got the group together, um, after, we, after we agreed to this, then we will vet this through our, our uh, council. Thank you. So, Your Honor, I'm, 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 I'm confused. The Department of Justice called you or you called them? I called them. I called Ken Bourgeron. And then they set the parameters. And then and they, they came in and told you what it's going to be like yes. in order to. This is how. I just want to make sure. This is how, this is how they negotiate. I, Mr. Harris, am I correct? This happened exactly the same way in North Chicago. Absolutely the same exact way. Yeah. They followed the same protocol that North Chicago followed when the Department of Justice went into their uh, department. But the Department of Justice went into there because of discriminatory practices. And, and I asked them to come right, so to, to evaluate ours. But, so, but you called them? I called them, yes. Okay. Yes. And, and you called the rest of the group, so they called no, the rest of the group? They, no. The they Department invited of Justice the rest of the group. invited the groups that they thought would be necessary to, to, to work this through. And that's okay. when they contacted the NAACP. The Department Latino of Coalition. Justice did? Yes, State Attorney's Office. OK. Um, so, OK. Thank you. Uh, the next one is the um, motion by Alderman Seagar, second by Alderman Taylor, to approve the uh, regular minutes of June 20th, 2016. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution, proclamations, presentation, appointments, Waukegan Main Street. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and council members. Um, I too would like to mention Scoop Waukegan this weekend. Uh, this will be the first opportunity I will have as uh, representative and executive director at Waukegan Main Street to participate in this event. Uh, I'm looking very much looking forward uh, to this event and this past weekend I had the opportunity to participate in the uh, 4th of July parade and that was uh, a very exciting experience also so and then to, to top it off yesterday afternoon um, at the lakefront um, so I'm encouraged and excited about the things that are, are happening here in, in downtown Waukegan and the lakefront, and we will keep you abreast of that. And also, um, I'd like to share with you that this week, three new businesses are opening in downtown Waukegan just in time for Scoop. Uh, they are Calamity Jane, a women's boutique 
and paparazzi, a gourmet caramel and cheesy popcorn outlet. The uh, two businesses are sharing retail space at 104 South Genesee Street. Our third business is the Tap Room, located at 36 North Genesee Street. Um, this was the old Genesee Inn location. So uh, I'm excited about uh, the new businesses that are coming on board. Very soon, the district will also welcome an additional four new businesses to the area. The uh, businesses are at various stages in their construction build out. Change and new opportunities are occurring on Genesee Street. I encourage everyone to visit downtown. You might be surprised at the positive things you will see. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item B, uh, motion by Alderman Taylor, second by Alderman Valco to appoint the new members of the Waukegan Public Library Board, um, Sylvia England, Michelle Billingsley, and Jennifer Salazar. Uh, ladies, would you please stand up and come to the mic? I sent all of you um, their resumes. Um, I, I had four people apply for the job. I, I uh, interviewed all four of those individuals, um, and I selected three people I think were absolutely wonderful, and I think they'll do a wonderful job on the board. Um, I, I thought at time to change the board up a bit. I put some millennials on there, Sylvia, you know, Sylvia and, and Jennifer. Um, so, um, any questions of the, of the new appointees? I, I do. I have a question. I, and I've talked to you, Mayor, regarding this issue. Nothing against the new appointees, but in the past there has been some issues with a few of the board members that uh, sit on the board. And um, I received emails this weekend that they were asked to remain on the board, and then the next thing they know is that they're being reappointed. I mean, they're not being reappointed. Um, and I asked regarding the term limits, and I understand there, they say there is no term limits. And I would like to know from Mr. <coughs> Lee, is there term limits on the board or not? And if so, what is, your, what is your longest serving uh, board member that has been sitting on the board? Could you? There, there are. Right. July is a term. You say there's no term limits. It's, it's the ordinance. There are, there are no term limits at this time. I think that it's up to the board and their bylaws to approve term limits. It's something that we will be talking about. Um, we've discussed it with the uh, Illinois Management Association. They think it's a good idea. And um, probably our longest serving board members been there for about 12 years. Um, and I would also like to recommend, Mayor, that an alderman sit on that board. The library board is one of the members. Because those are taxpayers' dollars, we approve the uh, monies for the library board, and we don't know anything that's going on over there at the library. We just hear what's happening. Um, he say, she say, this and that, but we don't know firsthand on what's happening over there um, at the library. So is that something that? I like that idea. I agree. Okay, I, I don't have a problem appointing an alderman to the how many How many members are there now? Nine? Nine. 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 So the next appointment will be an alderman. Uh, and, we can make an and, w yeah. and when is that? Yeah. Next year. But why? there's no term limits. Why, yep. why yeah. next year? There's nine members of the board. Uh, every July, three of them are up for reappointment. Yes. Every July. Every July. Every July? Every year. Mm -hmm. Three year terms. Oh, and they serve three years? Yes. Yes. At and the pleasure the, of the, the mayor. mayor. The mayor. The mayor and council. With, with approval of the council. With approval of the council. Yes. Why couldn't an, an alderman be appointed in addition to them 
on the board. I mean, they're, they're not a library board member. They would be a city representative, so why couldn't that be an addition? As a non-voting uh, member. Councilor, can you as answer a, that? As a non-voting member. Oh, here we go. Our state. ordinance provides that there are nine members of the board. They are on rotating terms three years each, beginning on the July after which they're appointed. So every year, there comes three people vacated. Their term runs on July 1 in three consecutive years. That's the way, that, that's the, way this, the ordinance is written. It also states that a, a member of that nine, not an additional member, can be an alderman. No more than one person can be a, on the board can be an alderman. But it is allowed to have one alderman on the board at any given time. But there are term limits. There are three-year terms. When they're appointed, they're for three years, and they run each alternate layer as the election comes forward. They can be there. It's a rolling term. Three years. Right. They, they're there for three. And okay. now, for, now for those people who wanted to be asked that were not asked this year, could they reapply next year? Anyone can apply. Okay. I, I put, uh, that's why I asked the alderman to give me names, um, and I got, I received four resumes. And, and where, did okay. those, where did those names come from, Mjorn? Uh, Citizen for Progress uh, submitted names, and the other people just submitted their names. Okay. Okay, um, there's three I, that I are up. Nice resumes. Um, before we appoint these, I would like to recommend that we in the first week of July that an alderman is, is put as one of those three on the board. Then we have to take someone off. Well, that's it. That, I mean, they can serve the next three years. A, a term or whatever, but I think an alderman should be on that board because at the last three years I've, I've been hearing this, that, and this is going on, that's going on over there. I don't know who, who to believe because there's no representative from the council sitting over there. It's a four and million si dollar budget. It needs to be. And since we can have an alderman on there, somebody up here should be sitting over there. I'm not saying I want to sit over there, but an alderman should be sitting over there. I would do it. I would do it. I agree. I, you worked over there. I used to work there. Yeah. Who did they? I'd like to speak to that if I may. Uh, um, Richard, is there is there a state ordinance prohibiting uh, more than nine uh, more than nine people on that board? I believe, yes, I believe there is. Okay, so nine is a, is the most that can be on the board. Nine is the limit, according to the local library act. Well, can we appoint Your Honor, two tonight and an alderman? Your Honor, yeah. uh, if I'm not mistaken, Richard, that's for voting reasons. Some, an alderman can sit as an, like an ad hoc, he, he or she don't have in voting. The goal here is to get information to bring back to council oh, I mean, as we did. Alderman, you anytime you want to. I mean, uh, well, you're uh, always welcome to go there. Y Your Honor, we're, you, we, we're, we're talking about right here. This is the same situation. I'm going to take somebody back. Genesee, the friends of the Genesee. The reason why all of them were asked to go on there because of different situations that were coming up. So as a non-voting member, an alderman can be on that board. Correct? Steve? I well, no more than nine can voting, sit on the board. voting members. Voting or non-voting. They can only have nine members on the board. That's what your order says. Okay, well then the alderman can go to the meeting as a representative of the city. Change the ordinance. <laughs> Change the ordinance, that's all. Change the ordinance. Anytime, you're all invited yeah. the third Wednesday of the month. But okay. That, but there's, but I, I, think, I think there should be an alderman sitting on there as a voting yeah. member, not just somebody that just casually comes to the meeting whenever, you know. I think there okay. should be a voting uh, okay. member on that, on that board. Richard, what is your budget over there, Richard? About $4 million. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's a lot of money that is taxpayer money. We, but we are audited the same as you are. Your, our audit is a part of your audit. In fact, we had our auditors over there today. We're audited every year. It, it, it's not necessarily the, the, not the auditing audit. that it's I'm looking at. It's justifying to our citizens. Oh. First of all, I want to apologize to the members of those right. being, being up here. That has nothing against you. Nothing there was against other things you. then. Then there's nothing more, Your how Honor. How many? How many of the, the the appointees are here tonight? Two. Two. Put them two on there and put an alderman on here. Yeah. Oh. 
Because the other person, I mean, how come they're not here and they're getting appointed to the library board? And they're not here. Just, okay. The alderman can discuss whoever wants. Yes, I can make a motion to modify I'll make a the comment. I'd be happy. I would be happy to sit on the board. And we, we can do it a year to year even, possibly, for the alderman. I don't know. Is that the person that's not here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint Ms. Sylvia England. Oh, that we amend the ordinance and the appointments and appoint Michelle Billings, not Michelle no. Billings, Sylvia England and, Jennifer Salazar. and Ms. Jennifer. Jennifer Salazar and an alderman. To be named in the future. No, we have to. We have to do it. Now. I'll, I'll be happy to. Uh, I'd be happy to do it. Okay, okay. I'll appoint. I'll appoint. Uh, you guys know I, I have history at the library, so I'll appoint David Villalobos. Okay. There it is. Okay. Okay. Now the motion is to appoint. Men, motion to amend. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the new motion is to appoint Sylvia England and Jennifer Salazar. And, and Alderman Villa Lobos to to the library board. Watch you have other people apply. Wait, wait. Okay, let's do it. Let's I have other people apply. Okay, let's do a roll call on let's do a roll call on, on, the, amendment. on the amendment. Maria. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisey. Aye. Alderman Villa Lobos. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Damaged. Okay, now on the, the new motion would be as amended to in, include Sylvia England, Jennifer Salazar, and Alderman Villalobos. Roll call. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Yes. Alder Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Velko? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Okay. Aye. Alderman Taylor, you made that motion. Velko, you seconded, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, passes. Those are the appointments. Uh, next is the Judicial Committee. Alderman Moisio, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We have one item. Item A. Motion authorizing proper city officials to draft an ordinance creating a new class of license for the retail sale of wine and beer, specifically EE-B, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Moisio, second by Alderman Valco. Roll call, please, Madam. Your Honor, I, I move to hold this matter over for another couple of weeks. Okay. Is there, it's held over. No, I'm not. Is there a motion to override that? No. No. No? no. no. For the liquor. This is for the liquor, for the liquor for license. The liquor license. For the, yeah, I'm okay, motion by Alden Valco to override. Is there a second? No second? I can't believe that. Okay, it's held over. That's it, Your Honor. What? That's it for the judiciary. Okay, thank you. Uh, Public Safety Committee, Alderman Tempest. <laughs> Public Safety Committee. <laughs> the Public Safety Committee recommends I so move that the Department of City officials be authorized to accept the 2016 Justice Assistant Grant in the amount of $46,000. $965 and into a memorandum of understanding with the County of Lake, the City of Zion for the distribution of the fund. The City of Waukegan will receive $26,965. The City of Zion will receive $10,000 and the County of Lake, Lake County State's Attorney's Office will receive $10,000 and I will so move. Motion by Alderman Tempest, second by Alderman Newsom. Roll call please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Zeeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Item B, Your Honor. Waukegan well, Police Department respects request authorization to waive the bid process and purchase a 2016 Ford Explorer from Morrow Brothers Ford. 
The purchase will be made to the State of Illinois Joint Purchasing Contract number 4017159 for a price of $29,980. Payment for this purchase will be made from the Federal Drug Asset Forfeiture Fund, Forfeiture Fund. Line item 296-6296-26493. And I would so move. Motion by Alderman Tempass, second by Alderman Newsom. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Zeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you. Insurance Committee, Alderman Taylor, please. Motion authorizing the proper city officials to settle Police Department Workman's Comp Claim C645-15-100 for an amount not to exceed $51,163.37, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Taylor, second by Alderman May. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Motion authorizing the proper city officials to settle Police Department Workman's Compensation Claim C645-15-10060 for an amount not to exceed $55,152.75 and I so move. Motion by Alderman Taylor, second by Alderman May. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Your Honor, before we go to a new business, uh, a lot of things was going on. Can we give a clap to the new uh, library board members, please? <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Okay, under old business, motion by Alderman Tempest, second by Alderman Newsom, to authorize the proper city official to award the demolition of the BRP building to the low qualified bidder, Lake County Grading of Liberty, Illinois, in an amount not to exceed $2 million. Funds from this project are available in line item 307-130-726480. Uh, discussion on the motion. You were gonna have Tina speak yeah. to Yeah, first of all, um, Gary, would you please come forward? I sent, I sent the information that I got from you to each of you today. Would you please come forward and explain the, the, uh, the remediation of that, of that uh, property, please. Good evening, Your Honor and members of the council. Gary Deegan, Deegan and Associates, LLC. You have the opportunity to vote tonight on a demolition project at $1.4 million for the demolition and $600,000 for the asbestos abatement complete. At the end of those two projects, which are under one contract, you will have a piece of property that's about 14 acres that will have an aggregate stone surface on it and will have all of the buildings and structures that you see there today, with the exception of the water tower, will be gone. You will have opened up a key piece of property in your property assemblage that includes the coke plant and the other OMC plant. Property assemblage that you've been working on to get that last building off of Seahorse Drive for some time now, and this will complete that. What I understand and what I heard loud and clear was the council had some concerns with the uncertainty with environmental remediation that may have to follow after the demolition. We've let BRP stay down there for many years. They did not facilitate much uh, remediation at all. They used the tanks, they used the gasoline, they did their engine testing, and they left town. We let OMC down there in a similar fashion. They did not take the initiative to clean up the property before they left town. The only facilitator that happens when you have one of these orphan sites like you have down there is that the city stands up finds innovative ways to take care of that issue for the community. The part that inspires me to be working down there for the last 10 to 15 years 
is that we're opening up properties that the public has never been able to access, that have been behind fences, behind Superfund sites, and now those are disappearing and we're seeing a whole new life down there on that lakefront. So with that, I'm going to say that we looked at thousands of pages of documents in the last few months while you folks have been debating this. And documents that were prepared by others, documents that came from US EPA, Illinois EPA, and the state fire marshal. We went into that property on May 12th when we had legal access to it very quickly. We did the asbestos surveys. We defined with certainty what the asbestos abatement is going to cost as you demolish that building. Absent asbestos abatement, there is no demolition. You can't take that building down until you take the asbestos out of it from a public health and a worker safety standpoint. The other concern was, what about all these underground storage tanks that they used to store gasoline and petroleum and motor oil while they were testing these motor boats and these engines and uh, BRP's devices as well? Well, the records between OMC North Plant and OMC South Plant were very much mixed up in terms of what underground storage tanks were where, which ones were abandoned, which ones were removed. We had the opportunity over the last couple weeks to clarify all of that. And at this point in our memo, we can say with certainty that of the 20 some tanks that were used underground at that facility, there is only less than five that may still exist and those five may have been abandoned in place with a procedure that allows for the removal of the con contents and backfilling the tank with sand. Now we have that as a to be determined item because we're very confident with the rest of it, but in any project of that magnitude, there is that small uncertainty. I can define that cost to the city as a cost that's no more than seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars to remove five underground storage tanks. It's a very routine project. It's a very routine process. And that can be something that's postponed until grants are available. It can be postponed until a developer expresses interest in the property. But the key is we know with certainty if a developer comes in, here are the conditions we've left you. We've removed the building. We've removed the asbestos. We've removed the uncertainty except for these underground storage tank issues. The other good news on that property is no PCBs, no trichloroethylene solvent, only petroleum products are the major contaminant of concern, and that is a readily implementable cleanup. Low cost, haul it up to the landfill, dig it out, or put an engineered barrier over it as another building or another uh, structure. Low cost solution to that problem. Uh, any questions? Alderman Taylor? Um, for me, it's not an um, environmental issue. I've actually spent some time talking to different facility engineers uh, for some of the corporations here on the North Shore. And their thing is, once the asbestos is removed, you don't really, as long as the foundation isn't disturbed, there's not a whole lot that you need to do there. That the environmental issues don't concern me. What this is, is the financial issues. Is I've thought long and hard about this. I even went to St. Joe's last week to compare their lakefront with, since it's the same developer that's looking at our lakefront, to see what is it that makes their area work and will it make our area work. What concerns me is they have some things that we don't have. They had a corporate sponsor. I look in our own city, we had the Genesee Theater that we were gonna close the door on until a, a corporate sponsor came in and helped us. That is crucial. If we're gonna do anything on the lakefront, why is the Port Authority not involved? Why is our Waukegan Park District not involved? Why is this all the responsibility of the city when we don't have the funds? For $2 million plus, as we all know, honestly, there will be additional expenditures. You can buy whole boards. If you're an developer, what is your incentive right now to come down here? In St. Joe's, what they had is that most people have second homes there. That was the incentive for making that happen. There is more discretionary income. The average income in Waukegan is about $48,000. With the tax rate that we have, people don't have discretionary income to go and use the restaurants that we're talking about putting down there. They're looking to take a cooler down there and make it a day project. 
this building right now has been there for years. If I had the money to do that, if I had the $12 million that I am paying in principal and interest on the bonds that we already have, I'd be in this in a heartbeat. But am I willing to burden my taxpayers by adding more debt to our already growing debt? I can't do that. I can't say to my residents who can't afford to put a roof on their house because they can't get a home equity loan, hey, you buckle up and, and suck it up and you know, keep in your financial budget when we won't do it. That's not fair to my residents. Bottom line, I work for the residents of the city and I am not going to tell a resident, hey, suck it up and stick it out with us when we won't do it. And therefore, I can't vote for this. I'm sorry, I would love to have our lakefront developed, but we have to become financially responsible. We have right now about $73 million in bonds. This is ridiculous. We can't function like that. Okay. This is gonna- Alderman, you know, we're gonna have Tina come up and, and, and discuss that with you. Any alderman that has a, an issue on environmental, please ask Mr. Deegan about an environmental issue because that was one of the issues that was brought to my attention. The minute I heard it, I called Mr. Deegan, I called Tom Daggett, who's an environmental attorney. Uh, I went over these issues with them. That's why Mr. Deegan is here to address any environmental issues on that property that you need an answer for. Are there any other questions on the environmentals? I have a question. Yes, uh, Thank Alderman you. May. Thank you. Um, and I'll probably talk again because I also have financial concerns. Um, just refresh my memory, please, Mr. Deegan. In the contract for the demolition from Lake County grading, are they actually performing the asbestos removal as well? We have that in their contract. They will subcontract to a specialized asbestos abatement company. And do we know who that will be? We do. We took bids on that. It is Loose Companies, very experienced company. Okay. And we have them contracted okay. under Lake County grading. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, Mr. Deegan, um, I think when the when I went down for the inspection, uh, you did say roughly 15 to 20, and then I, I did get a chance to read your report, and you said with, you're saying with, without, with certainty, the reports that you read, which are reports from whom? Where are these reports come? Numerous sources. I, I, I don't want to rely on any one source for such a major decision as this. So we looked at the state fire marshal records. I had my staff sort out the difference between tanks that were on plant two from those that are on plant one. We then looked at other consultants reports that had removal permits issued by the state fire marshal. So we have back up there that the removal permit, once that's issued, the tank gets taken out. There were consulting firms that issued post removal tank reports confirming that the soil beneath the tanks has low levels of petroleum in it and they did testing to confirm that the tanks were removed and there was in some cases some minor leakage from the tanks. So it was a comprehensive review. We had the opportunity to do it while you folks were debating it back and forth and we got on it and did it. Now I can say with reliance on my opinion in our firm that this is known information that we researched and found out. Now, is it, isn't it correct that the state fire marshal should have, uh, from my understanding, Chief uh, Bridges, uh, don't they have on record what, ha what tanks are in, what tanks are out? I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I know when we did this before uh, yeah, at a couple of gas stations, I thought the state fire marshal would have what whatever their records say is what most people go by. Gas stations are much more known in terms of their tankage because they're a commercial facility selling the fuel. Uh -huh. They're much more regulated and paid attention to. In the old days at a factory like this, there would be underground storage tanks that never got registered with the state fire marshal. So that's what creates that uncertainty on those five. They were probably predating the state fire marshal's records. Mm -hmm. So to, and, I, and obviously we've used you before, and you're well known through, not only throughout the state, uh, obviously in the county. To your recollection, there's only approximately five to 10 tanks down there. And the cost of remediating, if needed be, 
would be less than a at or less than $100,000. Correct. I just, I'll just correct you that there were 20 tanks at one point on that right. property. Right. We have found records that 15 are s substantially removed and gone, and there are five that are uncertain as to their status. So with that knowledge, I can say to this council and this city that $100,000 would certainly cover any contingency associated with those five tanks in the ground, based on my professional experience having removed tanks for many, many years. Now, the cost, the 1.5 that escalated to two, close to two million, did not include the tanks, only include the, abate, uh, the abating the asbestos out of the building, correct? Correct. So let's, say, let's just say for, you know, worst case scenario, what if we found more tanks in there? If we find more tanks in there, we, we make yep. the decision to postpone that work and stabilize the site until we can get grant money or other money funding to take care of those tanks. And, and there's nothing that you could do to kind of you know, give us a, a, a better understanding what's, what's there. And I, I know uh, the, uh, I've heard just recently that environmental is really not an issue. Uh, I think it should always be an issue because liability exposure, and that's kind of where I'm at with it. But um, you're comfortable with this $100,000 or less? Related to the underground storage tanks, yes. And the rest of the reports, there was testing done before the city acquired the property by the US EPA's brownfield program. They tested right up against the foundations. They didn't go under the floor, but they went right up against it, mm -hmm. and they found conditions that were very favorable at that site. Okay. And then I, I would have further questions about the the finance, and I want to thank Alderman Taylor for doing such Alderman, a- Alderman, can, uh, can you wait, Tina's No, 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 I know, I'm yeah. saying, I yeah. said, I, I would okay. have further questions. I was just, That's I'm fine. thanking Alderman Taylor for her doing her homework. Thank you very much, ma'am. Are there any more questions of Mr. Deegan about the environmental issues? No? Okay. Thank you. Um, now, we'll go to the financials. Tina and I met uh, uh, quite a long time this morning and discussed options and opportunities. Tina, would you please step to the mic? Um, I'm sure there's going to be some questions for you. Yes. Yeah. Wait. Okay. We'll figure it out. Okay, are there any questions of our finance director on this property? If so, please, uh, Alderman May, did you want to go first? Sure. Um, maybe my question might be for you. So uh, we received an email today now talking about a geo bond to facilitate this project? Yes. And so is that line item that's now in our, on our agenda referring to? No, that's this not. Is, this that's is still taking it from the? Rainy Day Fund, the Stabilization Fund? No, well, it's capital funds. That can, all, that, that can be adjusted accordingly. We've already appropriated the money for this. Tina can transfer that money. Um, and Tina, would you explain this, it? And repay the Stabilization right, absolutely. Fund. Yeah, Tina, I would you explain that, what we talked about this morning? I understand. Sure. About the GO bonds as opposed to the Rainy Day Fund money? I, well, the, the line item is the procurement issue. So that's a contract award to Lake County Grading, I believe, right? So that's... A, per, a procurement issue. Okay. So awarding a contract to a vendor that's gone through a bid process. Got you. And which is separate from how are you going to now pay that contract. Because um, the question as to potentially issuing a note or a bond versus using cash to pay for this project uh, came up recently, it wasn't in time to get it on the agenda so you could vote on it. So there wouldn't be a vote tonight on whether or not to issue bonds, correct, Mr. Right. Martin? So you can discuss it, but you wouldn't be voting on the financing tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, Wait a minute. I, I still hold to my original argument on this issue. Um, rainy day funds, geo bonds, whatever the case may be, it's taxpayer money. I don't understand why we have to do this right now. Do we have a developer that's asking us to do this? Um, we just, a um, really successful deal uh, that this administration made out on Route 43. And Cardinal Health sold their property to Bridge Development, and Bridge Development came in and demolished a seven or eight buildings. 
as part of their deal. Why do we feel that we need to lay out the red carpet, a poor community as ourselves, we don't have the money because we're either stealing from our rainy day fund or we're borrowing money. We're going to put it back on the taxpayers. Yeah. Why are we, why don't, why don't, why any developer to me that's worth their, their business, that knows what they're doing, can envision that a vacant lot. This is great news that Gary Deegan brings to us tonight. Great news. We can now, when we're marketing this property, we can say, hey, look it, we've done our homework. We really feel that there's not going to be these serious environmental issues. Here is all the evidence. Here is our study. That can be part of our marketing ploy when we go to go after these developers. Is there a developer that's ready to develop this property that I'm unaware of? Because I don't know of one. And if there is, then please, please share with me. Um, I don't, I, I, I said it before and I'll repeat myself. All of us would love to stand at the Yacht Club and look across and see that building gone and just see out to the beautiful lakefront. Of course we do. But we all, I would also love a vacation home. I'd love a Ferrari. I can't afford it. We can't afford this. I, I, I don't know why we would put another, I mean, are we at the point that we have so much debt? Ah, what's another million and a half debt? No big deal. It's, it is a big deal. At some point, we got to stop. We don't have the money to spend it. Why, why isn't it feasible to imagine that a developer will come in and make this demolition part of the deal? So we're wheeling and dealing with the developer on these, uh, the Coke plant site and now the BRP site. Why wouldn't we be able to negotiate that as part of a development deal? We'll pay for half the demolition, or you pay for the demolition. Is the property going to be worth, uh, is that one little sliver of property going to be worth the $3 million that we're going to end up putting into it just to get it flat? I, I, I just don't, I think we don't have the money. What's the hurry? What's the hurry? I mean, there's no developer. The, thing, the, the things that are going, down at the, going on down at the lakefront are fantastic. You know, there's staff down there. There's maintenance down there. Finally, after all these years, people are coming down. It looks beautiful. I mean, yeah, there is still an ugly old building there. Well, you know what? We bought it. Let's clean it up. Let's, let's cut the bushes around it. Let's clean it up as best we can. And then let's market it. Let's market it. Any developer can imagine a vacant lot there. Why can't the demolition wait until we have an actual developer in hand? Why would we put our taxpayers into debt or steal from our rainy day fund? Alderman, let me, um, let me ask uh, Russ Tomlin, our, our planner. Russ, can you come to the mic, please, and address that? Noel, you might as well come up, too. And that certainly would be an option. Uh, for the developer to tear it down, but any redevelopment agreement would absorb those costs in the end. It, we'd be paying through it uh, through TIF, and that would be part of the deal. But uh, we would TIF. Pay through, through TIF in, in, in the TIF right now, is it producing any money? No. And doesn't some of that money have to go back to Karcher? It does in the downtown TIF, yes. But if, if there were a development on this site, it would generate new increment that, that uh, I may be more apt to take on a million and a half uh, debt or hit if I knew development was about to happen. Is, do we have someone who's ready to develop? Uh, no, we haven't even put out a request for proposals on the site. Well, we own it. We could. Uh, well, only recently was the site next to the site capped and ready for development. So. We do anticipate putting out an RFP. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like I, I, we've said before, this is the, the time is right. This is the first time in our, you know, in the last 20 years that the property is right for development. The coke plant is finally capped. There's three feet of soil. It's a great thing. You know, we're finally at the point where it's ready. It's been the no fault of anyone up until now that the, the EPAs, you know, were finally cleared to develop that land. I just don't think that we have to spend the money right now to demolish the BRP building, that any developer can envision that as part of the deal. If we end up paying for it, and we, but at the, at, and at the same time, we know we're about to get condos or restaurants or whatever the heck it's going to be, great, great. I might be more willing to spend the money if I knew there was something coming right behind it, but we're going to spend the money now and then what, sit and wait? 
Yes. I guess my, my thing here is that, you know, I, I've had a lot of people ask me over the years, why can't Waukegan put a business deal together? And my, the way I look at it is, Waukegan never plans to fail, but we always fail to plan. We have plans, but we don't do well in the execution or the implementation of those plans. Let me just take the Genesee Theater. We put a whole lot of money into that theater. It is a gem of a theater. However, most of the residents, why they're paying for it in their taxes, most of them can't afford to buy tickets to the shows. So the Waukegan residents don't benefit, and now we have to find outside people to use it. The same thing could happen with this beach. It has happened with the Southside project. I believe we paid $90,000 to someone to do a feasibility study that I have never seen any results from. As I said at the time, I think we might as well just flush that money down the toilet because we haven't seen it, and as far as I know, HUD's not going to approve the project anyway. So again, we don't have a plan. This plan needs to involve other people besides the city. I don't want to be a landlord. Why is the Waukegan Park District not involved in this? Lake County Forest Preserve, a, a corporate partner. This is not our responsibility because what that means is you, the taxpayer, are going to pay for this. You are already paying a higher percentage in taxes than other communities are. Mm -hmm. And we can't be competitive when you're doing that. You're not going to use restaurants in Waukegan when you can go to Pleasant Prairie and not pay the same taxes. It's just logistics. You have to understand that you're paying for this, and you will be paying for it for a long period of time. If I'm correct, the bond on the Genesee Theater is until 2024. Here's another thing. I know Alderman Mosio asked me about this last time. We actually were, these people were in arrears with their taxes, but they were paying $151,921.55. Now that we bought the building, we've had it reassessed for the amount that we bought it for, and I believe we're paying something like 30, it's 17,000 something each, or each payment. So we're paying substantial, we're paying now as opposed to getting that money back. And we took money out of the school district and everything when we took that off the tax rolls. Why? We're not, a developer's not knocking at our door to do this. This could be five years down the road that you're paying interest on on a bond. It, it's just, it's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Mayor, if I can just address a couple of those comments. Uh, we have been continuing to work on the revitalization plan for the south side. Uh, we got very initial drafts of that just uh, last week on Friday. Uh, we're going to be reviewing it over the next uh, few weeks, uh, along with the Alderman of the Ward. And is that uh, the feasibility the study? It, it's a revitalization plan. The feasibility studies, it's really more apt description of what this is. Uh, and it will become uh, come before this body. Uh, we anticipate it going to P&Z in September and coming to you uh, in October. And when was that feasibility study due? Uh, there was no due date on the feasibility study. Okay. And, and we do have a plan for the lakefront as well, a, a plan that's won two national awards. So I, I, I think it's a good plan still and, and uh, it is starting to be implemented. So when we put that um, marina down there, that was on the master plan. No, that was a bit of a a, a, a bit of a, a move, uh, but a plan has to be flexible, and that does get something going, and that will generate increment in the in the TIF district. So we follow our plan when we want to, but no, I think it, the, the the plan has to be flexible, and I don't think we varied that much. Uh, the open space that was anticipated there has been pushed a little bit to the north, where it may be uh, even more workable. So, so for flexible, why don't we just hold off on this until we have a developer? That's not his. That's not his. That's for us. Any other questions? Anybody else have a question? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd like to chime in on, on both of the aldermen there. Um, and it goes to the financing of this. Um, is it true, uh, Your Honor uh, or Tina, that we're looking to uh, TIF use, I guess, try to pay this back through TIF? 
it, was that an option or this is going to be a GO bond if it comes to that point? The property is, uh, the 200 Seahorse Drive is located in TIF 8, which is the downtown TIF. Um, however, the TIF district right now, the level of increment that's being produced is um, almost entirely committed to an existing redevelopment agreement with Karcher Art Space. So there wouldn't be sufficient revenues from the TIF to be able to support a TIF revenue bond or note. Um, so if the city council decided to move forward with a bond, it would be a general obligation bond. Um, we could GO include bond. in the bond documents that if and when the TIF increment is sufficient, we could abate the property tax levy um, similar to what we did with the road bonds. They're geo bonds, but then we abate the, the tax levy each year with home rule sales tax. Okay, well, wait a minute, Ann. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm saying Ann. I apologize, Ms. Uh, Smigowski. <laughs> Um, that TIF has been up and running for about the last four, what, three to four, four years, five years maybe? Um, well, about five? Not, not the new ones, Alderman. The new ones were uh, uh, in uh, no, the, the 2013. Culture, the, the Culture Hotel one, though. Oh, that was, yes. Yeah, that's about five, five years ago, well, right? There was, the old TIF. There was a TIF, um, one large TIF. Right. That TIF was closed, and three new TIFs were established. But w there should be more than enough revenue that's been uh, TIF money that should have been, should be available, if I'm not mistaken. Where, where, is, where is most of the money from the TIF going? There, there's only about, this year, we'll only take in about $150,000 in increment. The base, the base year was, was it the 2012 tax year? Was the base year? So that's the base year, that's the year you're frozen. So any taxes collected up to right. the EAV of the base go to the districts that would collect taxes normally, and only the incremental increase in EAV over that amount right. stays in the right. TIF, and there just has not been robust growth in that TIF. And there are several tax-exempt properties within that TIF as well. There's the county building, CLC, our, you know, the Coke plant, other properties. How much of the Culture Hotel, how, how much money are they getting from the TIF? Um, this year they'll get just over $100,000. The redevelopment agreement is 90% of their total property tax bill is reimbursed to them, net of um, some sidewalk recoupment that we get. When you say 90% of our portion, right? No, 90% of the total property tax bill. So their total property tax bill is paid back by us? 90% 90, 90 of it is reimbursed to them if there's sufficient TIF revenue to do so. N not just our portion. You're talking about, so their tax bill is $20,000. Of the $20,000, we'll get 10% of that. That's not, we're talking 90% of the 20,000, which is about eighteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 they get? Correct, but their, their tax bill is substantially higher than that. It's a commercial They cut property. a better deal than the residents. And, and well, who was, who, uh, Russ, who was involved in, in getting that deal together for us? Anybody know? Who what? That negotiation started in 2008. There were several iterations of the contract over the years, and it, that was the final resolution that was approved by city council in 2013. Okay, the, uh, wouldn't Mr. Higg be a part of that? Wouldn't, didn't he come in and close the deal on, on he, that? He came in and improved our position in that deal, yes. Okay, Over thank what you. had been negotiated previously. Thank, um, my, I, I have my vote. Thank you. Anyone else? I got a question. Uh, go ahead. Um, are we ready to put out any uh, requests for proposals with a lot of lands that we have? Can we do that now? Uh, can we put out requests for proposals for developers to see about the lots of lands as they stand now? We can put out an RFP. Um, it would, in my opinion, damage our position if we put one out prematurely. Um, we did a draft RFP for just the Coke plant site in, I'm going to say about 2006, 2005 or 2006. I can find it and give you an exact date on it. Mm -hmm. um, and we opted at that time not to put it out to the public because we thought that 
it would based on conversations with developers that it would be more attractive to the development community if the coke plant site were combined with the omc site mm -hmm. at that time we didn't know that we might be an owner of the brp site mm -hmm. um, but i think the same cool. thinking still applies that offering the three properties together makes a more attractive development opportunity for developers. Having the risk abated and less uncertainty um, also will be more attractive to developers. So the more we can do to make everything clear and understandable and safe for developers, the more likely we are to get the caliber of developers that we'd like to see on our lakefront. Mm -hmm. um, so Alderman Taylor? I guess I have one more question on this is, is if this was part of your plan, Mayor, and you really wanted this property, this, the lawsuit in, was pretty much, we knew it was going in a different direction in December when the budget was being developed. Why didn't you put it in the budget and remove $2 million from something else? Do, out of a $158 million budget, we couldn't cut $2 million in expenditures and put that money there? rather than doing bonding? Well, I originally, when, when I discussed this with the alderman, as you recall in executive session, I, I asked all the aldermen in executive session if you were, were willing to purchase this property. Right. The unanimously, you agreed to purchase the property. Not unanimously. Okay, not unanimously. No. Okay, second question was, how do you want to pay for it? And the general consensus was, we don't want to bond it, pay for it. I pursued that avenue with our finance director. We, we did the financing with that. I asked her how much we could, re remain, c could remain in our rainy day fund and still be a viable. What do we have to have? So we went down to that number. I mean, that's how we uh, got the number of a million and But million that's 525,000. Right. That's not 2 million. Well, the 2 million is for everything. Yeah, um, but what the council approved on April 4th was just um, that was for purchase and for remediation. That's not what I see on here. That's what it was for. Purchase of 525000 remediation of 1500000 mm, What it says, the resolution was to authorize the proper city uh, officials to modify the authorization granted by the city council at the June 15, 2015 city council meeting authorizing the purchase of the property commonly known as 2300 Seahorse Drive. Um, basically, that was for the purchase. Okay. Okay. But the rest of it is an appropriation ordinance. No, I don't remember. Yeah, it was five thirty-six. But that's not what was approved, right? The two million dollars. Yes. No, we never. That's true. We never approved the money. No, we never. We never in appropriation. I'm not seeing. But. Tina, would you please explain that? Uh, within the appropriation, um, there was $2 million budgeted in Fund 307 um, for this. Well, there was more than that, but $2 million was set aside for property acquisition. Um, and that initially in the original budget proposal, that was to be financed through the issuance of debt. During the budget hearings, it became clear that the aldermen weren't interesting, interested in issuing debt for property acquisition. So the appropriation ordinance that was adopted included a non, um, or a permanent transfer rather, out of the stabilization fund, which is also called the rainy day funds, out of the stabilization fund and into the capital fund for this particular project of two million total. 525,000 so far has been earmarked for the purchase. That left just about 1.5 million, a little less than that, for the demolition. Since the bids came in at 2 million for abatement and demolition combined, um, we would also be transferring money out of the general fund to the capital fund to make up that half a million dollar gap. Uh, Alderman Balco, do you have a question? Uh, I'd like to speak uh, for the motion, Your Honor. Um, several months ago, I can't remember, can't recall if it was six, eight months ago, we had the, I believe it was five and a half million dollars for, we wanted to go off for bonds to make the, take the railroad tracks to make it a bi bicycle path and for the Lafarge agreement. Mm -hmm. And I was dead set against it. You and I had words about it. I, I didn't want to go out for bonds at the time. We had taken a survey. 
I could not justify spending money to updo railroad tracks to do a bicycle path or to buy Lafarge. This is a completely different ballgame, in my opinion, for me. This is the last piece of property, as Mr. Deegan has said. I envision, and you all know I'm not from here, but I've been here since 1974, and I consider Waukegan my home. I remember Sabanjan One saying, on the front page of the New Sun, Riviera of the Midwest, this is what it's going to be. Sometime to fruition, this is going to have to happen. And I know we're going to have to spend $2 million. In my estimation, I think it's a bargain from what we, Mr. Deegan and Mr. Haggerty and uh, Alderman Taylor, myself, went down there and took a look at all that, what's got to come out of there. And they're going to take the hit on the asbestos. I think we have to do this. This is the last piece of the puzzle to have Waukegan have the lakefront that it should have. And I think we're going to have to bite the bullet for a couple of years and then just pay for it. And that's it. Whether it comes out of GO bonds or whether we try and take it out of the, as Alderman um, May had said last time, uh, we deplete the rainy day fund and where are we going to make up that issue, but we can do it next year. That would be up to this council the way that they want to pay for it. Being chair of the finance committee, I know we can do it either way. But I'm speaking for the proposal. I don't hear anybody else speaking it, so I just want to get those points out there. I know a lot of people are struggling on this council for financial of what they want to see, their residents. Because in the, in the email that we got, the $13 a year that it's going to cost on our tax is for a $150,000 house, when you have homes in your ward that are pushing a million dollars, it's a little different. You know, mm -hmm. if you have a home that's worth $80,000, so it's going to cost you $6.50 a year to go for this proposal. So you have to weigh the pros and cons. I see the financials coming out of the, the, um, the money coming out of the beach. It's astronomical, the amount of people that are going down there. It's unbelievable, beyond my wild uh, dreams. And I think if the, we can get something down there, uh, we're, we're beautifying this, we're getting some concerts down there, we're doing some other things. I really believe, will it ever be the Midi, uh, Riviera of the Midwest? No. But I think it's going to be something truly beautiful, and it's going to take somebody to come in. And I, I don't remember who I was talking to, maybe Mr. Deegan a long time ago or Mr. Tomlin, and it was like, if a developer comes in that wants to build something, and you've got one dilapidated property at the end, they're not going to be interested. They want something that's going to be completely done so they can say, okay, we'll take this whole thing here, and then we're going to start to build from scratch. They want nothing to do with something that's going to cost them two, or in another couple of years, maybe it'll cost them 2.5. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's been two for us for the last year. In my opinion, I think we're getting a deal on this. Even though it's millions of dollars, in the amount of money that we have to spend, of what you're going to have to spend projected in another year or two years, we're getting a deal. And I'm done, sir. Any other? Anything else? Um, ladies and gentlemen, I know that certainly this is a controversial subject. Um, I'm no stranger to controversy. I remember several years ago when I, when I took out a golf course and put it in a sports park, um, I was the most hated man in the city of Waukegan for two years. That sports park now generates $10 million in revenue to Lake County because it was the right thing to do at the right time. We have an opportunity now to buy this property and have it demolished. We did buy it. We have, we have it demolished for $2 million. Bill, I agree with you. I think it's a steal. I know we're going to have to bite the bullet. Um, Lisa, I don't disagree with you whatsoever. I understand your financials. Alderman Cunningham. I understood you loud and clear. That's why Mr. Deegan came here tonight to address that issue. But I think if we truly want Waukegan to move forward and we truly want progress in this community, we have to take this last piece of the puzzle out. We have to get developers in here, do RFPs, and we have to get this property marketed properly because this piece that's left is probably the premier piece on that whole lakefront. You have views of the harbor and the lake and the beach. Um, so, yeah, am I adamant about this? Yeah, uh, but I am not. I am not 
I'm not anyone's master here. I'm bringing this back to the council to reconsider because I think that it's well worth the effort. It's well worth the $2 million. It, it's going to cost between 13 and $17 a year on a house of $150,000 of assessed value. I think that's a reasonable amount to ask our community to beautify and revitalize our lakefront. We have, we have a master plan, a, a nationally awarding master plan done by Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill. We know what we want to have in this area, and we know that developers that look at our master plan are interested, but they're not interested in this piece of property as it stands. I went to Cincinnati, Ohio, and made a presentation before a planning committee about this project. It was a three-hour presentation. At the end of the day, the planners said exactly what I thought. Take the building down. Not until you take the building down will anyone be interested in that property. I just got back from a, mayor's a national mayor's conference in Indianapolis, Indiana. I again brought this to the attention of the mayors and of the planners in Indianapolis. They again said to me, unless that building comes down, you will not get interest in that property. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a brain surgeon, but I can tell you, when you have planners nationally that are giving me advice, the same advice that Noel Kisher and Russ Tomlin have given me for the past three years, I have to heed that advice. And I'm telling you, I think that this is the proper thing to do at the proper time, and this, in my opinion, is a very reasonable price to pay for demolition of that, that acreage. Any, any more, uh, Arnold Moritz, Joe? Call for the question. Call for the question. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Cunningham? No. Alderman Seeger? Nay. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? I'd like to explain my vote. Probably one of the hardest votes I've ever taken on the city council. Yep. Well, I think we have to move forward, so I'm going to vote yes. Alderman May? No. Alderman Velko? Aye. Alderman Taylor? No. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, new business. Item A, approval of payroll dated June 24th, 2016 in the amount of $1,440,426.07. Final payout dated June 24th, 2016 in the amount of $4,931.82. Local 150 comp time payout dated June 24th, 2016 in the amount of $1,531.83. PBLC uniform allowance dated June 17, 2016, in the amount of $81,515, um, $550, $860, and $550. Motion by Alderman Valco, seconded by Alderman Cunningham. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Item B, approval of bills dated July 5th, 2016, the amount of $2,927,301.74. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Cunningham. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Item C, approval of use of Waukegan Municipal Beach, South Beach, for the Waukegan Yacht Club Youth Foundation Junior Sale Registration on Saturday, July 9th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. This event is approved event. In addition, the sponsor has applied under the new directive of non-city government use of city-owned buildings and venues. Motion by Alderman Villalobos, second by Alderman May. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, item D, approval of block parties. Motion by Alderman Segar, uh, second by Alderman Mosio. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, before we, we get to uh, audience time. I'd like to uh, read. I'd like to read something that uh, I received today in the mail um, from someone who had been watching our city council meetings, and it says 
Negative people need drama like oxygen. Stay positive, it will take their breath away. Audience time. Verna William Wilson. Verna Wilson. Good evening to the mayor, the city council, the residents of Waukegan's, and guests. I am Verna Wilson. I'm a first generational graduate, and my parents, my father had a sixth grade education. My mother turned out to be a, a elementary school teacher. She put me through school. I received five degrees. And I don't stand here to gloat about that. I just can't stand here to tell you about my passion. My passion is literacy. It's the only way you're going to change the trajectory of your community. I was a former Waukegan board member for two terms, and tonight that ended. And I've, it's without trepidation that I come here and stand before you to say that I served well. I fought the good fight. But it's just the process itself that has me kind of, kind of disturbed. Because Richard Lee, the director, asked me if I wanted to renew my, my membership on the board last month. And I agreed to him that, yes, it would be a service and a pleasure to serve. As my daughter is off to college, and I have more time to contribute to literacy. literacy. Through rumors, phone calls, emails, texts, I heard that I was being replaced. And I just felt that that's not the way things should be handled. If you are going to replace someone, the person whom you're replacing should be notified of the end of their term. That didn't happen until today at 12, 11 AM. So I show up tonight just to say that I'm proud to have served the community. I will continue to serve the library because I am the foundation president. And in, in the future, if you're going to change the policies while you're swimming up stem, upstream, someone needs to be made aware, especially the constituents that it's affecting. Because if I had known that I was no longer going to serve on the library board, I would have served on the board of Rosalind Franklin University. And that I turned down because I knew my compassion was to the library. I would have also served on the Mother's Trust Board. But again, I turned that down because I knew my due diligence and my commitment was with the Waukegan Public Library. So I stand here with my resume, not just to gloat about the acronyms before and after my name, but one of my master's degrees happens to be in human resource, and my doctorate is in educational leadership and policy unless we go forth and come with policies. And I also just completed my superintendent licensure last year. And I'm not gloating about that, but it's my job to give back to the community. And if we are going to change policies in the middle of the stream, we're doomed. We must be fair. We must have equity, access, and make sure that before you go out and feel something, that you notify those who are in the place that your seat is no longer valid or vacant. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Clyde McNamara. That's messed up, man. Ms. Williams, I want to say thank you for serving. I want to say that to you. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members. My commitment to social justice does not mean that I hate white people. I've always been good at making people feel uncomfortable by being extremely vocal about my views in politi political and social issues. This has also led to quite a few misunderstandings, especially with people not familiar with social justice. I have a lot of displaced anger about the system, a power of oppression. I have slowly begun to understand how one frame and contrast conversation is important. I am not arguing for self-imposed respectable politics, but I do believe that how you say something often influences how people interpret it. And if you want folks to truly listen to what you have to say, sometimes you have to target your message in a specific way. Right? Especially when you're discussing race and anti-racism, then all hell breaks loose. Tonight I come before you on behalf of the Waukegan Library. Once again, Mayor Motley conducting yourself like a dictator on the citizens of this city. Here at Waukegan Library, 
has a director who, does, who doesn't even live in Waukegan. The city pays him $117,000 annually. The only one, the director has hired no minorities. There's only one minority who works at the library. The director terminated the HR personnel, personnel while she was on sick leave, which made the city had to pay out a $60,000 million, $60, contract, 65. 60, oh, was it 65, was 60. The director knew the board was coming out there, so he canceled the May board meeting. Uh, he got to the, you know, he got to the mayor who wants to replace the board members. Now you throw on a rift between these educated black women. These educated black women are not being paid to be on this board but they should be respected. This underhand shenanigans needs to stop. In the words of Graves Autonomy actor Jesse Williams, a system built on divide and property and, and, and destroy us cannot stand if we don't. I would like to say this here. Doctor, uh, 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 dictator uh, Molly, that was, that was real wrong, which, how you how you handling these things. This city is paying out a lot of money. He just tricked y'all again, just like the Vest Fest, with this building that y'all just so, gave up $2 million on, and he sat there with up, the Mr. Vest Mike Fest Lamar. on the same thing. When are Mr. we going to sit Lamar? up there and stop listening to him crying and everything, and y'all do what the citizens elect y'all to do? Y'all ain't Mike got Lamar? $2 million. Your time is up, please. Okay, but y'all ain't got two million dollars. You gonna be broke. Brother Blanks. Brother Blanks. Uh, you know, I, I, a lot of times people ask me why, with all the work that I do with the youth, why don't I ever come down here and ask the city for some funding to aid and assist in the process of working with the youth, but I would have to tell you under this mayor, I would never come down here to ask for a dime, dollar, a contract because I don't get in the bed and I do not sleep with corrupt government for nothing. And under this mayor, he has led that in this city. Um, also, I want to make mention on the 7th, July the 7th, at BAM, uh, the fire chief uh, Bridges will be out at our organization uh, with the fire department to explain the qualifications that it takes to get in or to become a fire department out there the list is opening up. I received also a call from Chief Wallace from the uh, police department and uh, requesting to be a part of that and uh, because I guess the list is opening up for the police department as well and as I told the chief, I'm, I'm all right with that. As uh, long as whoever is coming leave their firearms, because this is not a this is not a law enforcement matter. This is a community matter. So that means if you want to come out and send some of the community, uh, the po uh, police, the community police, uh, what they call them, the um, community police, police officers. the community police officers, he can send those out. But there would be no need for firearms. We don't have firearms, and we don't feel there's no need for the officers to be there with any. So hopefully. If you want to come, he can respect those wishes as well. Um, here, when I'm, I'm address this issue, you know, as far as with the Waukee Library Board, I've been here before, and I spoke on that issue and the disrespect and the disregard for women, period, in this city under this mayor, and particularly black women. Maya and Shea Rothschild says that many times when it comes to uh, war drives debt. War drives debt. And you know, international bankers have been known to fund both sides of some of the bloodiest wars in history. Mm -hmm. Maya and Shell Rothschild said, they said they don't care who win or lose, long as they control the purse strings. This mayor, in my opinion, he don't really care who win or lose in this city, 
whether it's the taxpayers or whoever, long as he gets to control the purse strings before, he, before he's out of here in November. So I don't think he has the best interest of this city moving forward. I think this mayor have been and always have only had his own self-serving interests at heart. And I think you as the citizens should vote him out of this office because he's overstayed his time. And please understand when people are working in your best interest and when they are not. Thank you, Mr. Blanks. And I'm telling you right now, at this point in time, Thank you, this Mr. should Blanks. be over. You all have to come out more in this type of disrespect that you have and been conducting in this city for Thank the you, citizens period is bad. Thank you. Good evening, Margaret Carrasco. My visuals today, $117,000. Show of hands, how many Waukegan residents would like to have a city job that pays $117,000 a year? I bet you there's a lot. And I bet you there's a lot that are highly qualified. But that's not the case. Surprise, surprise. In light of this very embarrassing scenario that we have here that's taking place with its shameful mayor with um, the Waukegan Library. I started doing my homework and started scratching. I should have brought a shovel of all that's going to be uncovered. And what I found, and according to the document that I just distributed today, and for the media, I have an extra copy here. This is the Lake County voter registration for the person who has that Waukegan job. And guess what? He lives in Winter Harbor. In light of this discovery of more corruption, more cronyism, I did a FOIA request for every single commission board that is in city working and guess what i haven't even gotten it but i just did you know a little research and i already came up with 10 more persons that live in lake forest libertyville gurney grace lake mayor motley why are you denying waukegan residents jobs and opportunities and giving them to out-of-towners. Those positions are supposed to be for Waukegan residents, for Waukegan voters. Lastly, to make matters worse, I brought with me an official copy of the letter from the office of the Attorney General, State of Illinois, Lisa Madigan's office, that was given, that was sent to Mr. Ralph Peterson which has their determination in regards to the one, two, three, four, five different violations of his civil rights to speak, to take pictures, to ask questions to the mayor and at the city council. And I'll just share just a little bit here, which states, this determination is issued pursuant to the section of the Open Meetings Act. Concludes the City of Waukegan public comment rules restrictions have violated his rights. Thank you. It's time. Alderman Cunningham. Um, Uh, I guess the first question I would have, Mayor, is 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 there an open lawsuit regarding this uh, violation of Mr. Peterson's, uh, I guess, speaking in front of council? Is there a lawsuit open regarding that issue? Uh, we'll be discussing that in executive session. Yeah. Is there a lawsuit? Yes or no? We can. You, we're not discussing yes. it. Yes. There is. Yes. Okay. And with that being said, Your Honor, I, I am disappointed about that because when you were clerk, I think I was a second term as mayor, I'm sorry, as, as an alderman, 
Uh, we went through this. And if I'm not mistaken, there were several aldermen up here who talked to you about it. Several aldermen said something to you about it. Alderman Cunningham? I'm not speaking on it, Steve. I'm not speaking about the details of the case. I'm speaking on what is already public. I'm not speaking on the, the details of this case. No, I just appreciate my legal standpoint. We don't discuss the case in public. Uh, okay. Gentlemen, All, right. Gentlemen. All right. So it, it, it disappoints me that those things are happening. I will wait to, uh, out of respect of our corporation counsel, so I don't say anything that can further get us in trouble. But I'm disappointed, Your Honor. Second, um, as I reported last council meeting, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kelly, longtime residents of the, of the First Ward, uh, uh, members of Shiloh Baptist Church, uh, Mr. Kyle and Mr. Harris know them intimately, their children, everything. Uh, it, 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 this hurts me to even mention this. Uh, first, they were uh, misled on rehabbing a severely damaged home of theirs. Took them a year and a half to get their money back, over $100,000. Then paying the lawyer to get their money back. And then coming up with the conclusion to demolish their home. The day they were supposed to demolish their home, which they did, by a local contractor living in the war, they get a lawsuit. Listen to this, folks. A lawsuit by the Fenn Group that says that your house is in violation of whatever that rule they have. I don't know the technical name of it, but uh, they sued them for tearing down their house. How, how can you even deliver this? I can't even believe, and, I, and then I called them and says, hey, this is the situation, yada, yada, yada. You should have heard the response. Then I began to say, did you know there was another house just a block, maybe two blocks away that's been there for two years? There's another block, another house, probably another quarter of a block down. They've been there for a year and a half. Why didn't you go after them? Mr. and Mrs. Kelly been in Angelo how long? Mr. and Mrs. Kelly, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years. Good people. Spent their own money after getting back from what another uh, 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 contractor took from them. Heartbroken. Disappointed. They were hurt. I can't even believe. Here is a former corporation counsel of the city of Waukegan. It just, it angers me that you would take advantage of them, but more importantly, that you would use the statue. Is Dave here? Use that statue. And I don't want to say this wrong, but uh, then I might be sued. They used that statue to go after these folks when they were doing the right, they did the right thing. The right thing they did. Tore down the house. Try, first of all, they tried to get rehab from severely being damaged. That didn't work. They just tore the structure down, called it a loss. Luckily, they moved on, but to be sued for doing that, that is not what that statue was, uh, was all about when they crafted that, when cities would not do what they're supposed to do in order to uh, unsafe properties. I'm gonna be speaking with our state senator, Terry Link, our state representative, uh, Rita Mayfield, how we can change that, because this was not the intent of this, uh, of this statute, that state statute. Now these folks have to go through another legal proceeding of something they 
thought was the right thing. Uh, why did they sue the city of Waukegan? We own a big old building, the BRP, sue us. According to the statute, they can. But I wish they would sue us. I wish they would come up against these nine aldermen, our building department. They weren't suing when they were collecting a paycheck, being corporation counsel. They weren't suing then, but now the check has stopped. I got to find new means of, uh, of revenue. I'm just saying. Those are my comments. Thank you. Alderman Zeger. No comment. Alderman Moisio. Yeah, I just want to make sure I reiterate that I'm thankful to Reverend Harris and Mr. Kyle for all their work that was much needed, uh, I guess, whatever the word I'm looking for, to be looked at, to be revamped, to be revised. I just don't understand the Department of Justice. I mean, they have to respect the process that we've been, like us or not, we've been elected by the people to represent the people and to keep us out of the loop because we will get questions from our constituents and, and citizens, well, why was this agreed? Why was this? Why was that? And if we say we had no say in the matter, that, that I think just breeds more confusion for, the, for citizens and, you know, I think, in my opinion, we're lucky we had you guys, you know, just look at the model. You could have had another city with, with crackpots and it could have gone the other way. But again, I'm glad we had you guys leading the charge on that. But I just, I don't understand the Department of Justice thinking that they can just circumvent the people's elected representatives. I, I, don't, I don't understand that in any process, thinking you can do that. That's my only comments. Thank you. Alderman Villalobos. Um, so I'd like to start off by saying, um, just to speak about the 4th of July weekend, um, I was able to walk the parade twice, actually, um, with two groups. Um, I thought it was really good to see the turnouts. Um, as you all know, I'm very into um, civic pride and seeing people participate in our community events. Um, and to see the turnout over the 4th of July parade and the uh, fireworks display last night, um, it was very nice to see that. Um, I also want to mention um, the unexpected turn of events tonight regarding the uh, Waukegan Public Library and the board um, and no realm or idea of this oh, have I ever considered that I would be on a, appointed now uh, to the Waukegan Public Library's board um, I did not think that was gonna happen at all tonight I thought we were gonna have our new three appointees and I didn't expect to be one of those at by any stretch of the imagination um, but I do want to say that I am proud to uh, get the opportunity to work with the library. Um, for those who don't know, I did work at the Waukegan Public Library six and a half years, and I too have a passion for literacy and what it brings to our community. Um, so I look forward to working um, with the, the board and the director um, to help make sure our library stays on the track that it's been on for the past few years, being a national award-winning library. Um, for those individuals that um, didn't get reappointed, um, I apologize for that. Um, there was points made that are quite clear and um, it makes sense that uh, the lack of notification is, you know, it's, it's a bit insulting, you know, and I wish that things had been done differently. Um, but unfortunately that's, we gotta move forward. Um, but it is sad and I'm sorry for that. Um, secondly, or third, um, for those who aren't aware, um, I was not here last meeting um, I was uh, out of the country with family. I had the great opportunity to um, chaperone my niece's class trip to China, which is why I was gone. And when I came back, I got ill. So I'm playing catch up right now, trying to get back to residence. So if any of those residents are there listening, I am working towards getting back to you. Um, I got backlog on emails to get to. Um, so I'm just playing catch up right now. Um, if anybody's curious about my trip to China, please ask me. I'll be very happy to share with you. It was a wonderful experience. Um, also, in the last, I'll end on this note. Um, the BRP site, as you can tell, was a split vote here. Um, it was a hard choice to make. Um, I do understand the financial uh, position we put ourselves in by going forward with this. Um, it's tough, but I do have to say this to give some perspective where I come from. Um, I am technically impoverished. I live on this alderman salary of $22,000. Okay, I am working poor. I am. I am the Waukegan resident that we speak about. Um, 
I'm a minority. I'm in my mid 30s. I'm the, I'm the general demographic of Waukegan. Um, and it was a hard choice for me to, to, to make to understand that I too will be putting myself in a, in a, in a deeper hole by going forward with this. Um, but I do have faith that there's going to be a bright light at the end of this tunnel and that our lakefront will be at a better place and all residents will be at a better place because of the choices made today. So it was a tough choice to make on my behalf too for, for the BRP site. So I just want to let everybody know that. Um, and again, thank you for all for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Alderman Newsom. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank Ms. Verna Wilson for coming and speaking on uh, behalf of the Waukegan Public Library and her passion for serving. Uh, I appreciate your years of service. Uh, and to Dr. Harris Charmaine that is not here, um, I'd like to say that I appreciate her years of volunteer service. This is not a paid position. And anyone that steps up to, to do this has to have a passion for literacy and helping our children in our community. So I really appreciate you and I thank you for bringing this to our attention that we can get someone on that board that sits on this council to have an insight on what's happening on the board and so we won't have this happen again. Thank you so much for your service. Alderman Tempest. Thank you. First, I want to thank Pastor Harris for coming up and speaking to us this evening. He used to wrestle for me at one time, if you can believe that. And boy, what spiritual guidance you can give me now. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, and I appreciate what you do for the community, Ricky, if I can call you Ricky instead of Reverend. Uh, but I, I do appreciate you giving back to the community like you do. It's so important that people stay in our community that really have their roots in the community. And I appreciate you here very much. And Mr. Lee, I, I thank his, him for the services you give for our library too. He's been there some continuity now and uh, gone through some hard times, but he really works hard at keeping that library going. And I really appreciate the service you give our community. I want you to know, and I feel very strongly about that. And then I want to compliment our parade down Sheridan Road, one of the better roads in town, you know, <clears throat> goes through the sixth ward, by the way. Uh, I thought the, the parade was outstanding this year. I thought it, it really got the community involved and I know the community really enjoyed it and it's something we look forward to and it seems to get better and better, but what a, a great display of the community this last few days ago and I appreciate it very much and thank you, Mayor. Alderman May. Thank you. <clears throat> Yesterday was the 50th birthday of the Freedom of Information Act. Mm -hmm. uh, July 4th, 1966, the amendment was sent, signed into law. Um, a later adjunct of that law was the Open Meetings Act, which we're discussing tonight. And you'll see on your agenda, if you picked one up, our ordinance regarding the Open Meeting Acts and our rules of decorum for addressing city council are now listed on our agenda. This, I'm not talking about anything specific. But since March 31st, we've been put on notice from Lisa Madigan's office that we need to reconsider how we conduct the public speaking portion of our Open Meetings Act um, and that we need to reconsider how we limit the content of speech being directed towards us. And here we find ourselves going to an executive session tonight to discuss this matter. Um, I think we all need to take a serious hard look and look at our past and this isn't the first time I've said it. But FOIA and OMA are there for a reason because we are here to represent the people and the people have every right to address us. If you want to come up here and recite green eggs and ham, it's your right. Have we minutes. cannot limit content. So I hope that the Judiciary Committee will be revising that section of our ordinance in the very near future. Um, the only other item uh, we did, there was a holdover tonight on a new classification of liquor licenses. Um, and I will come back to council at the next meeting. 
I, um, under ordinance, the mayor keeps a current list of all existing liquor licenses and there are certain officials in the city that it's to be provided to and whenever there's a change that uh, that change is supposed they're supposed to be notified of that change I think maybe everyone on the council I'm certainly interested I'd like a current list of all the liquor licenses we have in the city and the classifications assigned to them and I have no doubt that I'll get it in short order because I always have a great experience with our licensing uh, through the city, collect, uh, the city collector. But there's also this elusive waiting list that I've been told about all these years, which does affect the liquor license that we're speaking of tonight. Um, so I'm also interested in seeing the waiting list. I, I, this, this all seems like public information to me. So I'm hoping that the mayor would be willing to provide the council with that before our next meeting so that we can get a good grasp on where we stand as a city with liquor licenses. And that's all I have. Thank you. Alderman Velko. No comment. Alderman Taylor. First, I would like to thank Dr. Wilson and Dr. Harris for their terms on the library board. I know you've been a valuable asset, and I apologize for the way this was handled. That please accept our apology. Secondly, I'd love to thank Reverend Harris for always coming with your wisdom and just the way that you you recite things for the community I think it's wonderful please continue um, as you know um, this vote has been very difficult for me with the BRP plant mainly because my ward is feeling a lot of pain I have foreclosures I have 23 homes that have fallen out of escrow because of taxes people can't afford to live in this city we have a community with 60% rentals. Why are people renting? They can't afford home ownership. How does that play out in our community? You don't have people contributing to the school system. You don't have people with disposable income. It hurts us all. And I want great things for this community. I know we're capable of great things. And I hope that this pays off, that I, I really do, because I, I want a fantastic community. Lastly, I'd like to, and on an up note, um, this weekend um, I was in the parade. I had my own event. Um, I, was in, I came as my own entry. My daughters participated in it, my husband, um, my goddaughters. Um, we had a terrific time, and I want to thank this community for the wonderful people that come out, the support you give us. You know, they're, out of all the things that Waukegan has, it's not the lakefront, it's not the Genesee Theater, it is the people. And I can't say enough for how well you treat us and thank you so much. You know, for my daughters, it was a highlight just to, I mean, they were so absorbed in giving candy out and I mean, it, it was wonderful. And I will say, apparently, my dog has his own fan club, but thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's it, Mayor. Uh, motion to go into executive session to discuss matters of litigation. So motion by Alderman Tempest, second by Alderman Valk. All in favor? Aye. The time is, the time is 920. We're going back into regular session of city council meeting. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Cunningham, uh, Alderman Zieger, Alderman Zieger, uh, Alderman Moisio, here. Alderman Villalobos, Present. Alderman Newsom, Present. Alderman Tempest, Present. Alderman May, here. Alderman Valco, here. Alderman Taylor. Present. Motion adjourned by Austin, uh, Alderman Villalobos, second by Alderman May. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. The city of Waukegan is replacing about 20,000 water meters with a new automated meter, which provides for an accurate, timely, and reliable reading without having to gain access to customers' properties. The new meters, which will be replaced at no cost to the customers, will be able to identify high water usage and potential leaks. In addition, customers will be able to access their water usage and account information conveniently online. The first thing you need to do is schedule an appointment with Professional Meters, Inc. to have your old meter replaced with a new automated meter reader, AMR for short. Look for a postcard in the mail 
with the call information or call 866-270-9629. PMI will arrive at your scheduled time to install your meter. They will arrive on a truck or a van with a PMI logo. The PMI installer will have on a shirt or a jacket with a PMI logo and will carry a PMI ID badge. Installers will also wear booties over their work boots to ensure they do not carry dirt, mud, or water into your home or business. The installation process should take less than 30 minutes. The installer will take a photo of the old meter to obtain a record of your final meter reading and the condition of the pipes and fittings. The next step is to turn off your shutout valves located on your water meter line near the meter. Remove the old meter and install the new AMR meter. The transmitter, which transmits your water usage data to the city, will be placed on a convenient location near the meter. The installer would take a photo of the new meter once it's installed. And that's it. The PMI installer will make sure everything is cleaned up, collect his tools, and head on to the next installation. You may receive a follow-up visit from a PMI manager to ensure your satisfaction with the installation and to make a quality control check of the meter installation. For more information about the automated meter reading installation program, please visit www.waukeganil.gov. If you have any questions regarding the meter installation, contact PMI at 866-270-9629 or the City of Waukegan City Collector at 847-599-2997.